Spider's back! <laughs> How you doing? It's so muggy here in Elwax. Had the air conditioner on for a while. Uh, so, uh, here I am. I'm back. No Spider's theme song intro today. <laughs> I just got to talk to you. I'm going to do three sessions if I can keep my voice back to back live. And please subscribe. <laughs> it rhymes. I never asked anybody to, but just click the button below. Uh, subscribe, please. I don't have a lot of subscribers because I never asked when I first started introducing my CFO Reds are Mole way back when. I don't know. Numerous. I don't know how many years now. I have to look that up, but not too long ago. Well, I'll have to check it. I'll give you the update on the date. You probably know better than I do. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, for several years or so, um, I, I got like, I think 650, you know, 500, 450, and so I never asked anybody to subscribe. I never. But I really appreciate every view, everybody that watches my Spy with Steve Foot Red Zone Bowl, uh, video, YouTube sessions. I really appreciate it a lot. I'm sorry if I lose my voice a bit because it's really muggy and I just turned the air conditioner off because it probably would over you know power my voice here on the mic uh, so um, I'm gonna do three sessions so I didn't have an intro I just want to get right into this so the first session is going to be on a game and I shouldn't say again because things have come up about the Canadian ratio and it was in, in Hamilton I mean sorry not, it was Hamilton Tiger Cats in Ottawa, sorry, Red Blacks last, uh, last week, and, or Thursday night. No, it wasn't Thursday night. It was, it was, I think it was Friday night. I'm not sure. Okay, I haven't got any, I haven't got any, uh, like, you know, exact dates here, but it was just recent, in the last week, so, or so. And uh, anyway, comments said, Matt, Dunnigan made about this ridiculous 23 snap so-called nationalized American player. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I want to go over that. I want to go over how it, how the Canadian ratio is just destroying the CFL. And, and, and I want to get into that again because it's very important because things are coming up all the time. Um, and, and they're there blatantly right in front of you. And people don't even know about the Canadian ratio. A lot of people that watch the NFL, they tune into CFL to see what it's all about. They don't know anything about it. Okay? And, and how it's being totally shoved down her throat and c controlled by Randy and Brosie, who's in bed with the Canadian Player Association, who has a majority of 465 votes, so they control the vote. So that's why you have this craziness with the 13 uh, snap so called American. A nice uh, a designated player, and that's the problem. I want to go over all that and say how insane it is, and with injuries, how the Canadian ratio and the starting lineup, how the Canadian ratio totally influences and basically handcuffs and dictates to to CFL coaches and general managers and owners and the players who actually plays and starts and who's on a roster. And what happens when there's an injury? So I want to go over all of it, okay? In very simplistic terms, I just want to cover it all so everybody fully understands what's really going on with the Canadian ratio and how it's shoved down their throat and how it's covered up and how it's never, other than Glenn Suther shoving it down their throat, nothing really against Glenn Suther. I'm sorry he's not very popular, but I got nothing against him other than when I sent my CFL Red Zone release, he said, oh, interesting. That's all he did because it's because he's got so much ego. He thinks he should be commissioner, and all he does is is talk about how great Canadian players are, and and so forth, and the Canadian ratio, how it's needed, and blah blah blah. And he he never speaks anything really, never talks about American players at all. He's so biased, just like Randy Ambrosi's, who is major conflict as a commissioner because he belonged to the Canadian Players Association, and he actually. Sirs literally took the CFL to court when the owners, when he was way back when, when he was belonged to Canadian Players Association, he took him to court to stop him from allowing the best players to play in the CFL. And this is what you get. Him as commissioner, and I want to go out in on that. I want to talk about that as well. Uh, 
which uh, I'm going to talk about in the next sessions because the next session is going to be on. Um, uh, well, I may talk about it in this session, okay? I may talk about this session, okay? But let's get into the first session. Then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about the second session. Then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about the third session, okay? But it's going to be three sessions this time, believe it or not. Not two, back to back, live takes, no remakes, okay? So the first one is the Canadian ratio. Well, the second one, I'll tell you what they're going to be. The second one, uh, problematic issues with the Canadian ratio and handcuffing, dictating Canadian ratio that's destroying our CFL three down game and basically halting it from it ever to become the best game it can be with the best players and, of course, with the best rule, my CFL Red Zone rule, with Randy and Brosey and his rules committee are jealous of because they didn't come up with themselves, and they're stopping that too. And I'll get into that the next session, and the next session will be on why the, the, the fans and the sports fans in general, football fans and all sports fans in Canada, whether you're NFL or CFL or both or, or either or, or sports fans in general, hockey fans, any sport, okay, and why sports fans in general, all the sports fans and all the younger generation sports fans should know what my CFL Red Zone rule and shouldn't be, shouldn't be deliberately suppressed by Randy Brosey because they're totally jealous of it because your stupid hash mark rule, which I'm going to get into as well, okay, uh, the next session. Okay, and how brutal it is, and that's why you see so many two and outs and so many plays now in the CFL, a third under 10 yards. Imagine, two-thirds, actually not a third, two-thirds, because of the ridiculous hash mark, hash pipe, stone hash pipe, Randy and Brosey rule that is ridiculous, okay? Just ridiculous. Last night in Montreal uh, with the Stampeders, it, McGill, the university, they don't even, you see the wider hash marks, what we always said. They don't even they don't even change them. They have lines in between the little because because uh, Dave Dickinson and, and 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 all these NFL guys you know playing Dave Dickinson he, playing basically two down NFL football. Imagine never throws a pass over ten yards. Uh, he's he's unbelievable. He's got to go and Huffnigger Huffnigger and Randy Brosey concocted that hash pipe stone hash pipe rule which is ridiculous. Oh yeah. Supposed to reduce two and outs. Oh yeah, reducing two and outs. All right. Oh yeah, <laughs> increasing two and outs. Like last night, how many two and outs did the Calgary Stampeders have in the second half? They hardly had a first down. And little tiny uh, sideways, short little pace because your stupid hash mark rule, narrow hash mark rule. Anyway, I'm going to get that into the next session. But we're going to talk about re the, the handcuffing, dictating Canadian ratio that's destroying our CFL three down game of football and why it's really, really hurting our game and, and stopping the coaches and the GMs and for the fans to see, for them to recruit the best players and for the fans to see the best players playing exciting seafall, three down football with the best available players, okay, without a Canadian handcuffing, dictating Canadian ration and with the best rule ever and that would be historical too if my CFL Red Zone rule was wisely adopted, which would be the biggest and the best rule ever adopted, most innovative, most exciting, most entertaining by far. Not even, not even close. It blows Handy, Randy and Brosey's stone, stone head hash mark rule out of the, out of the water. Uh, it, it's, it just eats it, eats it up for lunch, just like Trump did on the CNN and Crooked Biden, okay, at the debate. You know, it eats it he ate them for lunch. My Seafell Reds are mole. Eats Randy and Brosie's hash mark rule to lunch, too. Eats it for lunch. Okay, so let's get into the Canadian ratio. Major, major issues. Okay, there was a game, the Tiger Tat, last game in, in Ottawa, the Hellman Tiger Cats and the Red Blacks. Well, Hellman Tiger Cats designated, like, like the Stampeders did, and like most teams do, they have a designator. American national. That means that they played with the same team three years or multiple teams for a total of five years. Isn't that ridiculous? They're allowed 23 snaps a game. 23 snaps. What was happening, and Matt Dunnigan pointed it out, and he thought that this was just ridiculous. And so the designated uh, uh, American national for the Helmand Tiger Rats in Ottawa last week, okay, and Ottawa won the game. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons they won the game. White 
uh, the top receiver was and for the Helmut Tiger Cats. They paid all kinds of money for to keep. He was a designated American national. Imagine, and he actually they said he only had a couple plays left at the end of the game, and they were marched down to score a touchdown to win the tie, which they did. But then I, I believe uh, yes, in the last play of the game, they, Ottawa came back in the last minute and kicked a under underman, I believe, and kicked the field goal to win the game. I think in the last play of the game. But anyway, what was unbelievable was that White, their top receiver, was down to like one or two plays, and I I, I think they went over the 23 snaps because M Matt Dunnigan was monitored, and it was re so ridiculous that the referees were going the brutal referees in the CFL. They're absolutely brutal. I mean, holding every time there's a return, it's holding, holding all the time. But it's interesting, like last night in Montreal, what's Calgary St. Peter game? I'll get into that. Well, I'll talk about it now. They called all kinds of penalties on the St. Peters, holding penalties on Michelle, okay, receiver, who's trying to block, he was holding, but the offensive line from Montreal were holding like all night. They weren't called at all. It's obvious Ambrosi wants Montreal Alouettes. He can't stand the Stampeders. And, and the referee was incompetent and brutal. He was brutal. And that was a rough in the passer. That was rough in the passer. That's the rule. Okay, that was, fix was in. I like the Montreal Alouettes. I'm glad they had a, big, a good crowd there. It looked like it was sold out uh, twice in a row now. And I'm happy for them because I like the Alouettes. And I'm glad they won the Great Cup last year. It was good for the league. But I, I want to even play fair. I want the referees to be fair. This new referee, that this is, he's a new referee this year. He's absolutely brutal. He hasn't got a clue what he's doing. Uh, and uh, Montreal was blatantly offside by a couple yards numerous times. Never called it. Never called it. So they definitely went Montreal to win, and they did win. And, and, and Mir looked terrible. Uh, he looked terrible. He never even had, I think he had just over 100 yards passing. It was ridiculous. Hogan played good, the running back replacement for Mills, it was on the one great game, and Houston, what a sin. He last played the game against Winnipeg last week in overtime, interception. To win the game in overtime, that's all they had to do is kick a field goal. They got pushed back in the penalty, but it still, Randy Paredes um, per, per, had, the, had the win and he kicked it through. I think it was 50 some, 53, 34 yards, or 52 yards, or whatever. But anyway, he hurt his ankle. Imagine that intercept in Houston. He's out for like on the six game injury. That's what it, what it, but Trey Ford looked terrible. He looked terrible. And uh, I think he's washed up. He can't, he can't run anymore. He couldn't even, he got it. He could have had two points. He could have got down the field and kicked the field and won the game in Calgary. And, and right at the latter stage minutes of the game, couple minutes left in the game or less and uh, he went sideways and he collapsed basically he couldn't do it he intercepted it when he went for two points Montreal but anyway um, let's get back to the Canadian ratio issues okay so imagine 23 snaps so Matt Dunnigan white you know he said well that's his last snap stat Matt Dunnigan said well he's still on the field it looks like they went over the 23 snaps and they all get penalized Penalized, and the referees were going over, over monitoring. Imagine telling the, the coach he had only so many play snaps left. It was insane. This is what Randy and Brosey, the Canadian Players Association, and their, their their majority of 465 votes. Even though there's an American president now, the Canadian Players Association, because he because he's 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 outnumbered. He's outnumbered, so he has to play the game. This is how ridiculous they want to reduce it to seven to five. Imagine they ever expanded to ten teams. It's gone to eight. It's gone to eight now. It, it didn't go down to five. It went to eight because Randy Rosie's in bed with the Canadian Players Association. And they're basically controlling the CFL with the Canadian Players Association uh, a majority vote, and they're handcuffing, dictating Canadian ratio, which is absolutely brutal. And this, not, what they they implemented, put in this not American, uh, uh, American uh, naturalized Canadian rule of 23 snaps is ridiculous. And they wouldn't reduce the ratio. If, if that's if you've been with the team three years, the same team or multiple teams for a total of five, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I think they allowed two players. They were supposed to go with the three. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable. What it does, you have to take a top player because it's hard. 
because of all the one-year contracts, which is another major problem in the CFL, and they're all going to the NFL, and the Canadian players are one of more than Americans. There's over 30 Canadian players playing in the NFL. They're the ones that wanted as much and more than Americans, the one-year contracts, which has destroyed the CFL. There's no continuity. The, the, the turnover is 30-some players, free agents every year. It's unbelievable. And the Canadian players are demanding more money because you have to start eight Canadians now. And half the roster or more, actually, is actually, I think, by two, two more, have to be Canadian. Imagine, with only 23, uh, 23, or see, 23 or 27, I forget what it is, 27 uh, university football schools. I think it's that. That's what the number is. 27 or 28. I think it's more than 23. I've lost count because it's got, the quality's gotten so bad because there's only about six decent uh, Canadian college football teams. Laval, we know who they, who they are. Western and, and, and a few others. Calgary and, and a few others. That's, that's it. They're not even six anymore, I don't think. Uh, uh, and, and, and you have to have like come up with 350 plus players to fill the Canadian ratio in the CFL, and starters that aren't even good enough. And you can see the Canadian receivers that are out there. And here's the problem with the Canadian ratio. Have you noticed? We Canadian receivers on, yeah, we have some Philpott brothers, mainly the, the, guy, the, the Philpott uh, younger brother in Montreal is better because the Philpott brother in Calgary uh, plays with Stampeders, could draft with Stampeders. He's, he was injured all last year. So, and, and, and Barnes looks okay, but the he never even got a pass last night, I don't think, uh, for Calgary. But uh, there's very few. Uh, oh, there's there's a couple. Montreal has another one from St. of X. Uh, but there's not that many. Uh, Saskatchewan got one or two. But this been, we've been waiting for 12 years to have any good, any good Canadian receivers in the CFL. 10 or 12 years. It's been brutal. But there's a lot of weak leaks. Toronto has one. They play that is so weak. I mean, he's he's so weak. He's only there to fill the Canadian ratio. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. This this uh, uh, this Cana this American naturalized Canadian with the 23 snaps is just brutal. That's just that like M M M Matt Dunnigan could not believe it. He even said it during the game. He couldn't believe it. He said it's ridiculous. It's uh, uh, can you imagine reduce the Canadian ratio or eliminate it completely. Allow the best players to play in the CFL. How are you going to improve the game? How are you going to, unless you allow the best players to play? How are you going to get more viewers unless you allow the best players to play? How are you going to, uh, uh, like, like, fill all the empty seats all around the CFL? Thank God the Alouettes are doing better. But look at all the other stadiums. They're all empty. Look at Edmonton. There's nobody. There's nobody in the stands. And, 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 and like in Hamilton, it's half full or less. It's ridiculous. The Tiger Cats are, have lost four straight games. Edmonton, who shouldn't have lost four straight games, they've lost four straight games. How's that going to help? There'll be nobody there. There's hardly anybody there in the stands now. It's, it's embarrassing. Three or four thousand. I don't know if it's even that in Edmonton. It's unbelievable. You've got to allow the best players. When there's injuries, like, you have to replace the deal. You have to replace it with another Canadian. Or if, if, you, if, 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 if you have a, 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 a like, if you, American goes down, uh, they juggle the ratio, and, and no matter what happens in, in a, on a CFL game, if there's an injury, it always messes up the ratio. And it, make, it, it, it makes teams weaker and weaker. And injuries to Canadian starters, and a lot of them aren't even good enough to start. O linemen that are way overpaid because they have to fill the Canadian starter ratio. And that's where they they try to fill it at, at the O line position, and they pay them over two hundred thousand or more, two hundred fifty thousand, and they're not even good enough to play the start or even be on a roster. This is how bad it is. I hope people that don't know about the Canadian ratio are listening to me and hearing what's really going on. And when there's injuries, it just multiplies multiplies the problem like tenfold. It makes it worse and worse and worse and makes the teams weaker and weaker and weaker and playing third and fourth string uh, CIS, why well, call them, see they call them sports uh, Canadian college players that never played in the U.S. and not even top Canadian players in the few good top Canadian schools we have that have that, that the CFL are drawing from six 
max teams now out of 27, 28 teams, uh, and, and it's unbelievable that they have to put in these terribly weak links that have no business being on the CFL field. They're only there because of their passport and the Canadian starter, guaranteed Canadian starter ratio and guaranteed Canadian starter huge half the plus the roster ratio. ratio. Imagine! There's, yeah, it's more than American players and the whole roster that has to be Canadian. That's part of the huge Canadian roster ratio and it's guaranteed. It's insane! This is insane! It's insane. It's a destroying the CFL, and 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 I, I I'm I'm really pissed off about it. And everybody should be pissed off, and they should be speaking out. And 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 Glenn Suther always shoving Canadian players down our throat all the time. Never praises any American players. Always pushing the Canadian ratio. He he's he's bullshitting you. He's not telling you the truth. He's 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 he's, he's totally biased toward the Canadian players. Look, I'm. I'm, I, I, you can't find anybody more Canadian than me, but I want the best for the CFL and best for the fans and how you ever got to improve your audience and how you ever got to fill all the empty seats in the CFL unless you allow the best available players to play. And I don't care where they're from. The best needs to play. You can't have a league with a Canadian ratio and half or more than roster, roster, yes, more than half the roster have to be Canadian. And eight starters with backups. They're not near as good enough. And a lot of the starters aren't good enough. Canadian, guaranteed Canadian starter ratio players aren't good enough to play in the CFL. And can you imagine this is going on in all nine teams and they expand the tell it's 10 it's even got to get worse. Way worse. And it's getting way worse every year. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And, 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 and then you get Canadian players going down, they're, they're over 30 plus playing the CFL, going down every year being drafted. The Canadian uh, CFL draft is a joke. It's a joke. It should be an open CFL draft. And, and the Canadian ratio has got to go. You know, this, you know what? i got to laugh at the Canadian Players Association and Randy Ambrosi, who's in bed, who belong to it. And, and the majority vote in their, in their handcuffing dictating Canadian ratio. Look, they want the one-year contracts. They go, they're hypocrites. Go, go to the NFL. Yeah, there's no restriction put on them, is there? Is there? For every player that goes or, or tries out or goes to the CFL, it should be it be taken off the Canadian ratio. And then you get, get it where it'll be totally eliminated. And the best players will play. Better yet, Shut them down. Shut the Canadian Players Association down and get rid of Randy Ambrosi because he's part of them. Get rid of him. He's got to go. Get, he's destroying the CFL, what he's doing. What he's doing, listen, he's like Lemon getting involved with his suspension, gambling. Yeah, you know, give him, give him a warning. If he does it again, then suspend him. Don't take him off, suspend him, and then getting involved with Jad Kelly's situation, Randy Ambrosi trying to be uh, like go after him like you did, like, that's all you do. You don't do nothing to market the game. You just play, that's all you do is be a bully. You're a bully. And, 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 and lie to the, lie to, lie, lie to the CFL fans, okay, but your stupid hash mark rule, which is a joke. It's destroying the CFL. Oh, your little tiny, little short, little sideways passes. There's two-thirds of the, much of all the CFL teams, two-thirds of passing plays under 10 yards, you imagine, oh yeah, he said, oh, your, your hash pipe stone, hash mark rule was going to increase great big plays and more touchdowns. Are you kidding me? It's increased two and outs like you wouldn't believe. Two-thirds of the passing plays in the CFL at this point under 10 yards, are you kidding me? And your little stupid sideways little passes because of narrow hash, 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 hash marks, and limit, and which, what, uh, all, you know what, what it does? You know what happens? Two and out, two and out, two and outs, two and outs, more two and outs, more two and outs, more two and outs. That's what happens, Randy and Brosie. No big place. Yeah, there would be my CFL red zone rule. You get rid of that stupid hash mark. You implement my CFL red zone rule. You want to see big plays downfield because I want to get in the, the, the red zone to play with my exciting CFL, CFL 3, CFL Spider CFL Reds are mold. Sorry. And, and I'm getting so, so hyped up. And another thing, my CFL Reds are mold. Every CFL game this year has been there staring the CFL right in the eye. Every game. 
every game in the red zone. Little chip chop field goals in the red zone. Or slightly outside, depending on the second out stop was made in the red zone. Can you imagine if my CFO red zone rule was implemented? I'm talking about every game this year, my CFO red zone rule is staring the CFO again and again and again right in the eye. Just, it's there, just waiting to be adopted, wisely adopted by a political leftist, Randy and Brosey Bro commissioner, who, who took away the Edmund Eskimo's name for Trudeau to get votes, to play the race card, and destroy the franchise. Bring back the Edmund Eskimo's name! Get rid of Randy and Brosey, the new owners! The owners now, he's sucking up to for a great cup of games in Winnipeg. Of course, he's in bed with Miller. He played football with him. He's so biased Winnipeg, so he'll get his vote. And in Vancouver, get him a great cup, gets his, his vote too. And suck up to Bob Young for two great cups and get his vote. That's the only reason he's there. we got to get this guy out. The fans got to demand that he gets fired and he's thrown out. And he's Canadian, with his Canadian ratio and his stone hash... Hash pipe, hash, ridiculous hash mark rule that's destroying the CFL and his one year contracts that's destroying the CFL and the Canadian ratio, the handcuffing, dictating Canadian ratio that's destroying our game, destroying the CFL and preventing the best players in the CFL to be drafted with an open CFL draft and to be recruited so the best players are playing CFL three down football, okay? All teams with the best available players playing our CFL three down game at the highest level with the best available players with, with the best rule ever adopted by the CFL my spider CFL red zone rule which will be super entertaining full of drama most innovative most exciting most exciting CFL rule ever adopted by the CFL and then you'll have a product to sell. Get rid of the one year contracts, get get rid of the Canadian race and allow the best available players to play, bring in a two year contract or three year year contract. But Mark Cohen never would have won a one year contract and bring 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 in my CFL red zone role and get some marketing and logos, team logos in the end zone like Ottawa has done recently, which I'm, I'm quite impressed with. But look at Van, look look at the Hamilton, empty end zones. Come on, we need to get rid of the Canadian race zone, get rid of Randy Brosing, bring my, my CFL red zone rule. Spider, spider, here comes.